Welcome to episode 100 of Around the Verse. We have some exciting videos for you today. We have a closer look at the caterpillar and also a video of the female character from Forrest and a tour of Cloud Imperium's LA office from our one and only chairman. But first, the news. We pushed Star Citizen Alpha 2.4.1 to the PTU on Tuesday, and we are currently looking at the results from that with the hopes that we'll be able to patch it live shortly. This is uh, an entirely bug fix related patch, uh, hoping to clear up some of the issues we discovered after 2.4 went live. But uh, it's looking good, and we'll have an update for you shortly. 2.5 has not been locked down yet, but as soon as it has been locked down, we will be telling you what is in 2.5? Although, Ben, do you have any sneaks about what is in 2.5? Yeah, I think we can, we can guarantee that there will be some more things to explore in Crusader. There's going to be at least one flyable shirt. One flyable one shirt? One flyable shirt. All right. I'd uh, like to see that flyable shirt. At least one flyable ship. And uh, who knows, maybe some more shirts in uh, our corp. Cool. Yes, speaking of shirts, we actually have real live shirts, uh, new polo shirts that people had been asking for for quite a while now. And uh, here's the sample that our very own chairman is wearing. Check it out. Cool. We've decided to do a little bit of a deep dive uh, just on the LA studio for this week. And uh, for the upcoming weeks, you will see a bit more of a deep dive into our other studios. Well, let's check in with our LA studio and find out what they've been working on. Hey everybody, it's Eric Kyron Davis coming at you from the Los Angeles studio and I'm here with your update. Let's gonna, we're going to start off with the female rig. We talked a lot about the female character lately because we're very excited to see her come online and have you guys play with her. But the, a big step to bringing her online and, and making her move is the rig. So our own John Riggs and team have been working on SRC updates for her. So I've been working on the female rig. We've been trying to make it so that it's exactly like the male rig. So we try to align the two so that all the joint angles, everything are the same. So that the characters will work just the same in the engine. So we had a, we had a complete faked muscle system to them so that they deform better in the game. We're also adding all this tech to the Van Duel system. That muscle deformation stuff as well as just overall getting the female rig is really exciting for us here. Moving into the animation team, Steve Bender's back from his trip to the, uh, Germany. Uh, he was in the UK for a little while as well. They were doing a lot of updates to our enter and exits. Uh, it's a very, <laughs> very exciting um, portion of the technology for our ships. We were noticing that their original intent was that it was supposed to get you in and out of the ship in the hangars. And for you trying out your ship and getting the initial experience of the ship, that's, that's nice. It looks great, it looks fun. But the second you've got to do it every single time you get into the ship and you get out of the ship, it takes too long. I, I call it grandpa goes to the grocery store um, because it's that sort of amount of time where you get in and you just sit down and you just say, oh, sh now I've got to get out. And wait, no, I didn't want to get out and it takes forever. Um, and we knew that we were also going to need to cut this down considerably for the Persistent Universe and for Squadron 42 so that uh, when you're in a combat zone or when you want to get into, say, an FPS combat zone, you want to leave an FPS combat zone uh, back and forth through your ship, that you're able to do that with much more fluidity. Um, so we've created, we went in and we reshot all the enter exits for all the ships, they are considerably faster now by about, in some cases, five to eight seconds faster. And we also went in and we said, okay, well, um, from a design standpoint, we don't like dead buttons. So if I am pressing the W key to run forward and I press, I think currently it's the V key, I switch to walk. Or if I, I uh, press, hold down the, the shift key, I go to sprint. So we wanted to make sure that those modifier buttons within the base locomotion set also come through in how you're dealing with, say, with the ladders or when you're dealing with getting into and out of your ships. Seeing the new animations for our ships is, is interesting, not only because of uh, it's just fun to see new animations, but the new technology that they're bringing in with it is very interesting and in how it's going to impact our ships overall. 
And lastly, but not leastly, on the engineering team, Paul and his team are working actively on the Item System 2.0, which we've talked about for, uh, often. But this week, we have a major milestone coming to a close. This doesn't only bring Item System 2.0 online with what you've seen before, but also offers some new aspects. Here in the LA team, we've been working on the new item system. Uh, we're calling it Item System 2.0. Uh, we're trying to get rid of the old one because the old one was big, bulky, clumsy, and it was prone to a lot of errors. The new one is a lot more organized, a lot more componentized, so you could only grab what you need and just put it in the item. You could have, like, I don't know, a seat, and it could have the functionality of your radar and a weapon if you wanted to. It'd be silly, but you could do it. So as you can see in uh, the fun video, we have um, interactions. So we put this on like the seat saying, here's an interaction here, here's an interaction here. So you can see one climbing up the ladder and another guy going in through the canopy. Or maybe on the dashboard, we have another interaction where you hit the button on the dashboard and it closes all the gateways, turns on your power, turns on your um, engines, and then you can just go fly off and be free. So we're componentizing a lot of our new item stuff, so it's a lot easier on the designers, a lot more flexible, and just a whole lot more awesome. <laughs> I personally can't wait to get into the ship, push a button, and have more control over it. Maybe it's just control that's going to be exciting with Item System 2.0, but this is just a minor taste that you're going to see as we hit our major milestones down the road. So that's it. That's all at LA for the, for the week. It was great to talk to you guys, and see you next time. So one of the most common questions we get asked is, where is the female character? So I have some good news that I want to share with everybody. We basically have been spending the last couple months diligently working on the female character. So we started by getting all of our uh, kind of concepts together and start kind of building the body that we want, just the size, the height, and we wanted something uh, generic but realistic. Once we were happy with all of her proportions and we have all the photo reference that we needed, James Koo, uh, one of our senior character artists uh, working on the character bodies at the moment, took these concepts and then re-sculpted a brand new female from scratch uh, in ZBrush. And once we were happy with all the proportions and the look and the feel of the female character, we basically retopologized all of the, the whole uh, high poly sculpt. We started uh, baking down all of our textures from the high poly sculpt onto the game topology. Once we were happy with all the bakes, we took that and we got it into the engine. And then we started applying uh, our human skin shader to it and uh, making sure the translucency looks good, making sure that the skin, the softness, and the transmittance map, and we're kind of happy with the way that the skin is actually looking like skin. Um, at that point, we bring it into Mari, and we uh, spend a good deal of time doing texture projection. So we retake some of that early concept reference and some very high res uh, shots of uh, the female body, you know, the el you know, you got the elbows, you got the hands, right? And we basically start repainting um, on the 3D object to get those kind of high dense uh, quality areas repainted back on. And so we start blending in our normal map with our initial bake normal map with our high sampled photos, and then uh, we basically restart retouching the diffuse map as well and start getting the more subtle touches like the blemishes and the color variation throughout the skin. And then uh, we take all that in Mari and we put it back into the engine and that's kind of where we're at with uh, the character at the moment. Now, it sounds like it's just, let's just put it in there and go, but there's still a ton of work that we have to do before we can do that because there is hundreds if not thousands of animations that still need to be applied and tons of testing and fitting the clothing. And so there's a ton of work to still uh, get done, but uh, we're making really good progress. So we have something to look forward to uh, 
in the next couple of months. Let's follow along with Chris as he goes to check out our dev area in the LA studio offices. So this side of the development is uh, basically where all the programmers and designers are, hence Astro Engineering. So come here and then there's our women uh, restroom, another unisex restroom. Again, vandals are welcome in this particular area. So on this side of uh, the office space back here is where all our designers and engineers are. Uh, so you can see a few of them that you may know. Kirk here is uh, busily doing tech design things. Uh, this is uh, the office of John Schimmel. So he's our logistics executive. Uh, but John's actually, uh, he is uh, flying, I think, one day or two. I'm flying, actually, on uh, this weekend, too, to England, because we've got to finish our last bit of performance capture and pickups. Um, so let's go this way. Uh, we have Calyx. And then here is a rather crowded area, but this is the writer room. Uh, there you are, see? Notice the animals in there. Research and development at Anvil Aerospace. Uh, but say hi to the backers for the 100th episode of Around the Verse. Happy 100. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. All right, let's see if anyone sees anything special on the screens. And I'll, be, I'll be looking for the forum threads. Right, how we come here? Uh, so on this side, we mostly we mostly have design. So you have Matt uh, and Terry. You have Matt Sherman there, um, and I think uh, Randy sits here too, although he was in the office here. So, and here is kind of the engineering row. So uh, you'll, you guys will all know Mark Aben over there. Uh, you may, may or may not know Steve Humphreys, who has just moved over from our UK office to here. He's sort of come for the sunshine. Uh, and uh, we've got Chad, and we've got Ariel over here. So, and Chad, you're working on items and item controllers and systems right now. So it's a lot of code on the screen. Not very interesting, but <laughs> it'll do interesting things in the game. Uh, and then if we go this way, we uh, past it is uh, our intrepid LA QA team. They're looking very intrepid. There you go. And they do sort of the kind of testing for the group here as we're sort of trying new stuff out or seeing if the item stuff works or whatever. And then they work closely with the team in Austin as well as the team in the UK. And I think now we have three testers in Germany too, right? Mm -hmm. So we have test group in every one of our studios, which is very useful for quick iteration and feedback. Um, all right, let's come this way. Here's Eric, who's our senior producer here in LA's office. He's the flight operations executive of Angel Aerospace. Hey, Eric, say hi. Hi, everybody. And then if you come here, although don't focus too much on it. Don't focus too much on it. Just quickly, there you are, that's the schedule. Now off. See, <laughs> we actually do these things like scheduling. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, and then here we have uh, Paul Rendell's office, who's our chief systems engineer. Hey, Paul. Hi. So uh, he's here busily working along with his uh, stormtrooper uh, friend. <laughs> um, but, uh, and he's got, his, he's got a fish. He's got Finding Dory there, too. Um, come on. All right, this way. So this is uh, our smaller conference room that's for the dev area. Um, so we theme this as an Anvil uh, aerospace showroom. Again, we took uh, one of our concept images and blew it up and put it on the wall. Um, we actually, the only things we're really missing here are the uh, conference room tables that we uh, don't have in yet, but they theoretically are gonna be in a week or so, which I'm gonna miss because I'm going to England. Uh, but this is actually where Tony Zurovec sits when he's here in LA. Um, and my office is right next to it. So we've used this mostly as Tony's office at the moment instead of a conference room. But ultimately, the idea is it's a conference room, a smaller one for the dev group here working. So if we walk over on this side, this is uh, my office. So as we can see, it's uh, got the RSI chairman, more graphic stuff. We, again, 
all these things are put in. You kind of have to put these on glass walls, otherwise people walk through them. Until we had them, people were going walking into the glass. Uh, and normally you just put bars or something, but we thought it'd be more fun to use stuff from the game. So uh, anyway, this is my office where I work from. So I think you guys have sort of seen a few sort of 10 for the chairman shot from over here. And then if you turn around, although everyone's over here, this is the uh, Sean's office and Forrest's office. So mechanical engineering department. And then uh, Forrest sits there and Sean sits here, but Forrest is in the UK right now. He's we're in the character team there, and Sean's uh, giving directions over here. And then we come around this way. So on, on the side in the office back here is where um, Josh Herman and Steve Bender sit. So Josh Herman is also in the UK working with the character team there. Uh, he's our new art director for characters, uh, really great guy. And then Steve Bender is our director of animation. He's been working with the cinematic animation team in, and the FPS animation team in Germany. So he should be back in about a month. Um, and then over here is uh, our sort of art side of the building. So on this side, we have sort of our, what we would call tech art. So this is Patrick. I think you guys have seen before. And he looks like you're setting up damage on Hornets. Yes, that is, uh, that's correct. We're just outlining how it should break apart and what it's going to look like before anyone gets started. Cool. All right, come. And uh, this is Matt and Terry, who I think you saw just over there. And Mark McCall, who uh, is our senior uh, kind of tech animator. And this is Eric, who's one of our newest additions. So, and they're all setting up characters. Don't look too quickly at this. Come on this way. And then on this side, uh, we have sort of uh, our ship, ship guys, ship team. So you'll notice Elwyn there and Daniel, you probably know. Uh, there's Jin there and there's Gage in the background talking to Shane. And Shane's one of our character artists who sits here. And here's uh, James Koo, who's uh, working with us to make our faces and characters amazing. And he's incredibly talented, but not, he's not necessarily wants to be on camera all the time. So but he's doing an amazing job on the, the faces. And then as we come around here, we have, uh, well, a concept. Uh, so you've got Justin in the background, Germerk and Jeremiah, who are all our amazing concept guys. And Omar here, who was a concept guy, but really has now become character supremo, uh, who's working on the medium marine uh, outfit, yes. I believe. So, and cleaning up some of our old material stuff. So we're in the process. The whole new characters uh, are going pretty awesome, I think. Uh, we're sort of talking a little bit about them, but uh, we're aiming to be world class on everything. Faces, characters, match any other game out there. And so we've got the team to do it. And then if we just pop over here just quickly, not that anyone's playing it right now, but we do have a little foosball machine if people want to lose a little uh, burn off of blood, a bit of steam, get competitive. You know, it's usually a table tennis or a foosball machine in offices, but there was one in the German office, so we decided not to. <laughs> we okay? We should, uh, all right, <laughs> that'll get cut, I think. My name is Elwin Bachelor Jr., and I'm the lead vehicle artist in LA. I'm currently working on the tractor beam operator, but I've worked on the habitation room, the engine room, the jump drive room, um, and I've also done some work on the cargo module, specifically the arms, the way they uh, open up and lower the elevator. What is interesting about the tractor beam room uh, is that it gives you a clear view of the entire side of the ship, the right side specifically. So it is sitting on the ship opposite of the command module. So in combination with the command module, you get a pretty clear view of all sides of your ship. Uh, in addition to giving you a really clear view of the opening of the command module. So as you're grabbing resources or cargo from space, you can clearly see how you're dragging them into the ship directly. With the creation of the Drake Interplanetary Materials set, I really got the chance to uh, define the way the manufacturer looks. So it's going to be used not only on the Caterpillar, but across the board for Drake ships, which is a real honor as a 3D artist, really getting to define the way a manufacturer looks. And it's heavily based off of the work that Justin Wentz did. I've been working on a bit of everything for it. I started with uh, interiors, working my way through all the different uh, rooms, living quarters, cargo bay, stuff like that. I've since moved on to some of the exterior elements, uh, like um, some of the exterior look of the command module, some of the outer paneling, and uh, 
gun turret as well that will be towards the front of the ship and also be uh, on the bottom of the ship towards the back. And I'm also finishing up the redesign of the command module. Once it's completed, which is still several months away, parts that I'm most excited for players to see are one, the engine room, because it looks really cool, and two, the cargo module, because we're intending for players to be able to put a handful of dragonflies inside of each cargo module. Um, and I just can't wait to see a fully stocked caterpillar just open up its sides and everybody buzzes out at once. I think it's gonna be really awesome to see that. Hey there, Tyler Whitkin, Community Manager in the Austin, Texas studio, here to bring you this week's MVP. A huge congratulations to Money Shot for creating the metal Star Citizen themed emblems. A lot of awesome content is always coming from our community, but this one raises the bar. The amount of creativity and effort that went into making these, it's pretty epic. So, congrats again to you. You're this week's MVP. Back to you guys. Well, that was the uh, the first part, anyway, of Around the Verse episode 100. Uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in, for making the show possible. Uh, it's just been a tremendous honor to make this show happen. Uh, I know you've all seen it evolve from some very humble beginnings. Uh, it's, it's been quite a ride. Uh, I am just stumbling over my words right now, but uh, I'd like to thank uh, everybody who was involved, the citizens who made it possible, our fantastic uh, folks behind the camera, Justin and Tom, uh, Jared, who has, you know, he juggles a lot of things to make ATV happen, and of course, uh, Sandy, who is, uh, you could not ask for a better uh, co-host. Uh, and Ben. <laughs> Can't have one house without the other house. Yes, thanks so. to me for... Yes, there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, it, it, it's been great, and now it's time to make some exciting changes. We are. We're going to evolve uh, Star Citizen. There was a um, subscriber poll that went up, so you can check it out here if you haven't already voted for that. Um, we may open that up to everybody just to see what your favorite shows were, but we're in the process of evolving and improving the quality of uh, the content um, and getting more aligned with uh, showing more in what we're doing in each of the studios. Because there's some um, amazing stuff coming there down is, the There is some amazing stuff. Um, and as you know, that all of this is sponsored by our subscribers. So thank you very much to all of our subscribers for making this happen. And we are looking at ways to be more efficient so that we can get some video people in the other studios as well. Um, as our subscriber number grows, we are able to do um, extra stuff. And so much work gets done in, in the UK, in Germany, and folks don't get to see that. So we're, we're trying to figure out how to bring that to you. It does. There is uh, almost 200 people there, and it's quite, it's quite mind-blowing, all the stuff that they're working on. Uh, so we're hoping to be able to share uh, more and more of that, and we are going to start the new programming uh, later in the month of July. So we look forward to it, and we hope you guys look forward to it too. So. Until then, uh, we're going to be continuing our 100th episode celebration. We've got some more exciting segments coming up over the next couple weeks, so keep watching. And of course, it wouldn't be an ATV without a fast forward. So here's something I think you'll enjoy. Be sure to tune in to Reverse the Verse tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific on Twitch. We'll be answering your questions about that uh, fast forward and other aspects of Star Citizen. And uh, if you like the show, be sure to subscribe and click the like button on YouTube. It sounds silly, but it really helps us a lot.
as always, to all of our subscribers for making this show possible from its very beginnings, from growing and, and sending us stuff for our fan cave, which looks pretty impressive. And uh, we would like to uh, duplicate this in our other studios, Austin and Manchester and Frankfurt, so you can see what's going on there. There's a lot going on there. So thank you very much, subscribers. We we'll will see, see you, you next, next week. All right. <laughs> Around the verse, around the verse, yeah, around, around the verse. verse, around the verse. There we go. Welcome to Around the Verse. This is our very first show, which we're very excited about. I'm Sandy Gardner, the VP of Marketing, and... I'm Ben Lesnick, I'm Community Manager and Designer in Star Citizen. And uh, we're basically here to take you uh, even closer to the uh, nerve center of the game. Uh, we're operating out of uh, CIG Santa Monica, here with Chris Roberts and the team. Um, a lot of people are kind of confused about Santa Monica. They think, oh, it's the, it's the marketing office, oh, it's it's the you know, glossy business office. Hey, this is Ben Lesnar from Star Citizen Marketing. I'm calling about the freelancer campaign. We need to get this thing out to everybody. I want it on the side of buses. I want it on movie posters. I want it etched on the moon. Oh, you can't do that? Well, then you're worthless. Ciao, baby. But seriously, folks, uh, when we said we were moving the show to Los Angeles, we heard that it was going to be this uh, Hollywood affair, shallow, not involved with the game. And uh, what we want to show you is that that's as far from the truth as possible. Uh, here in Santa Monica, we have a hardworking team of artists, designers, programmers. They're, they're the guys who built the Star Citizen dogfighting module, and they're going to be building the next parts of the verse. So let me take a page from Wingman and uh, give you a little tour, introduce you. Please, uh, come with me. Let me take you upstairs. That's where the uh, real work happens. This is our writer's room. Here we have Harry Jarvis, who you know from Austin. Hello. It's our newest writer, William. And of course, the legendary Dave Haddock. Hello. What you guys working on? Writing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's an Around the Verse exclusive. <laughs> Over here, we have a selection of our fantastic programmers. This is the office of the man himself, Mr. Chris Roberts. But in fact, this is not Chris Roberts. This is Dennis Daniels, our long-suffering IT guy. <laughs> and here we have the Santa Monica Art Room with uh, our famous hair model, Dave Hobbins. Head back here, we go to the community area. Did you know that many of Star Citizen's developers are on social media? If you would like to follow Star Citizen on Facebook, you can find us here. Or on Twitter, here. And even Instagram, here. And for a full list of developers' personal accounts they're willing to share with the community, check out this link. You can find out uh, what I bought at Amazon this week. Star Wars stuff. It was, yeah, it was probably Star Wars stuff.